Hello SimHub users, this is part three of a tutorial series on using the Dash Studio functionality within SimHub. And in this video we're going to talk specifically about the toolbar in the Dash Editor. I've created this simple tutorial dashboard with just a couple rectangles in it. And we know that we can start a dashboard by clicking on this button, but to edit a dashboard that you've already created, you can click on the More option in the bottom right of that dashboard and you'll be given an option to edit that dashboard. We'll learn about how to add elements to our dashboard in the next video, but I have two elements in my dashboard and you can see them on the canvas here in the middle. You can also see them listed in my components for this particular screen. I have red rectangle and I have teal rectangle. And I'm using these two objects to demonstrate what these, these toolbar items at the top can do. I can select multiple items by holding down the left control button and clicking. Notice that both of these now have a red square, red rectangle around them. That demonstrates that they're selected. I can also select items by using the components explorer here on the right. With both of these objects selected, and by the way, you cannot use the right control button. I know that if you were, say, selecting multiple cells in Microsoft Excel or selecting multiple files in Windows Explorer, you can use either of the two control keys. But in Dash Studio, only the left control will work for multiple selections. These first six items deal with alignment of multiple items. When you create a dash, you're going to have a lot of elements and it looks sloppy if they share different vertical and horizontal spaces. You want them to look clean and nice. This first one will align the left of the multiple items you have selected. So see when I click that, these now are aligned with their left sides in the same, the same vertical line. We can also align their centers. So if we had drawn a center line through our red rectangle and our teal rectangle, those would be aligned that way, and right aligned will do that. Now before I demonstrate these next three, I'm going to move one of these rectangles just by clicking it, and uh, let's move it there. With multiple objects selected, I can now align their tops, and they will be aligned on the same horizontal line. We can align their middles, and we can align their bottoms like that. Really helpful if you have a lot of controls and they are all off by a few pixels. It would be a pain to try to zoom in and manually you know, uh, get everything perfectly aligned to your liking, but these buttons are going to make it much easier for you. Next, we have stretching. So let me move these down and if I have these both selected, if I stretch to the largest object, what that's going to do is make both of these the same width. With both of them selected, if I click on this stretch to taller object, this is going to make both of these objects the same height, whichever one is taller. So we're going to see the red rectangle grow in height. Notice this does nothing with alignment. If I want these to be cleanly aligned, I have to use these buttons on the left. like so. So now we have two rectangles that are equal in their dimensions and they are aligned nicely. Next, we can lock objects. You can do that either by clicking on an object here and clicking the padlock or by using the component explorer here and clicking on the padlock next to it. Why would you want to lock something? Well, we have our red rectangle locked. I am trying to click and drag on my red rectangle. Nothing's happening because this selection is locked. Let me do the same thing with the teal rectangle. Well, that can still move. So once you have a component that you know it is where it needs to be, I recommend locking it so that you don't accidentally click and drag and move it out of place because then, well, of course you have control Z, but if you then do a whole bunch of other things and realize, oops, I had moved my teal rectangle, oh, then you have to nudge it back into place. So that's what the locks do. If I put a lock on now the teal rectangle, I cannot select or move 
either of these things. I can still change their properties by clicking on them in the Components Explorer up here. Next, we have a grid. And when we turn that on, you're going to see the grid visually. Now, this grid does not appear when you are running the dashboard. The grid that you see here is only going to show when you are editing the dashboard. And its purpose is to help you align things. And you can specify the granularity of the grid. It's currently set to 10, and that's 10 pixels. So every grid square here represents 10 pixels. If I unlock my two rectangle elements and I try to move this, notice that it's snapping every 10 pixels, vertically and horizontally. If my grid was not on, notice I can drag this you know, to, to the one pixel granularity. Whereas here, this is going to restrict me to the 10 pixel granularity. Or if I wanted a 20 pixel granularity, uh, we can do the same. And it also works with resizing. I can only resize to the granularity of my grid here. I'll turn that back off. Next, we have labels. Notice that these two components have names, red rectangle and teal rectangle. By default, these labels are going to be hidden, but you can show them by clicking on that, and now you see the name of that particular component on the top left of it. Again, this is not something that will appear when the dashboard's running, but only when you are editing the dashboard. And then show boxes. What this is going to do is put a box around each of the elements. I know I have the red rectangle selected, so of course you see the red faint outline notifying that it's selected. But look at the teal rectangle. The teal rectangle has this little blue line around it, and that's just showing you the extents of the width and the height, I should say, of this element. And I can turn those on and off using this. In the next video, we're going to learn about working with layers, groups, ordering, and naming components.